The new Godzilla film directed by Gareth Edwards and produced by legendary Warner Brothers has brought new questions to the ever evolving king of monsters, Godzilla. Once again he has evolved to become larger and stronger. His nuclear breath has also changed and has demonstrated a new property which makes it a type of plasma-like ray with a burning after effect. Is Godzilla becoming more than we can ever imagine? In part one of Universe G's The Hypothetical Science of Godzilla's Nuclear Breath, we first had to understand certain factors and processes in order to relate what requirements would be needed in order for Godzilla to have developed a type of biological nuclear breath array. We cannot simply say Godzilla's nuclear breath array just manifested itself because of the mutations that occurred in his body. We had to find organic carbon-based materials that have special properties that would allow Godzilla's body to house a devastating nuclear ray. We determined based on actual science, a material called graphene would be a possible candidate we can use, combined with his super regenerative abilities as the basis of his cellular structure and as such be resistant to the high amounts of energy such a biological weapon would create. Also other facts have to be taken into account like the checks and balances a nuclear power plant has to ensure a stable production of nuclear energy which needs to be translated to Godzilla's unnatural physiology. Couple all of this with the high evolved brain which would be needed to regulate the biological nuclear systems which creates energy output for its nuclear breath array. Taking all of this into account we can now separate Godzilla's organs in a manner that would recreate this process but also be able to power up the energy in different intensities which Godzilla has demonstrated in different battles. One of the most important parts of the production of nuclear energy is the element needed to create nuclear fission. In nuclear power plants, enriched uranium is used to create nuclear energy. The enriched uranium is what allows the chemical reaction to occur so nuclear fission would happen and large amounts of radioactive heat to be released. In Godzilla's case, we must understand the enriched uranium within his physiology may be created by a chemical process unique to his physiology and the organs that created this process may be a natural creator of a type of organic enriched uranium by an organic chemical process. The organic enriched uranium is then injected into Godzilla's specialized stomach that in many ways is like a nuclear reactor where the fission occurs. Once nuclear fission occurs, other factors have to be taken into consideration for his nuclear systems to make and intensify the process for his nuclear stomach and other organs to create his nuclear breath or ray. Based on current scientific information of Godzilla's nuclear breath array, we have seen that it is a type of plasma-like beam of super high intensity that not only hits the target, but also covers it with the nuclear plasma which makes it even more devastating. It shows us that just as Godzilla has grown and mutated through the many decades at an accelerated rate, his nuclear breath array has become more deadly and efficient. This tells us that the King of Monsters is mutating and growing ever changing into something more than what we are just now starting to understand. Now that we have formed a basis on how Godzilla is able to create nuclear fission within his stomach, we must now look at the other organs in his organic weapon system. Godzilla's nuclear breath array, if we look at this from a true scientific perspective, is no longer an extremely superheated vapor substance as it initially was observed in his first appearance in 1954. We can see based on the data from Godzilla's ever-evolving mutated physiology that his body has adapted the specialized organs in a very specific manner to be able to release the energy that becomes his nuclear breath array. As we move on from his nuclear stomach, we already know that this is the place where the chemical reaction occurs to not only give nutrition to Godzilla, but it is the pre-chamber where one of the components of his nuclear breath is later sent to his plasma holding bladder. The plasma holding bladder is a chamber where the plasma is pre-stored before being released to the nuclear plasma ray holding cavity. Here the plasma could be mixed with an incendiary type of acid. This coupled with what may be specialized muscles in the cavity that regulate the speed and pressure the mixture is released by Godzilla. This process seems to be a logical process based on how Godzilla can only use his nuclear breath array in limited bursts of different intensities. This tells us that he needs to recharge his breath and depending on the intensity and power of this breath array, the longer this recharge would take to happen. 
we have looked at how some of Godzilla's organs are very similar to a nuclear power plant and how these organs can possibly regulate organic chemicals to create the materials needed for nuclear fission. We will continue our look into Godzilla's physiology in part 3 of Universe G, the hypothetical science of Godzilla's nuclear breath. In part 3 we will go into more detail of other organs which complete Godzilla's nuclear biological weapon and how they could help to focus and intensify Godzilla's nuclear breath.